Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today's video is going to be an overview of my new Giant TCR Advanced Pro Disc Zero 2022. <sighs> Long name that, isn't it? Okay, so the first thing uh, I want to talk about is the frame. Um, as you can see, um, and you probably guess, it's full carbon fibre. Um, it's got a carbon fibre um, steerer tube too. I don't know if you can see that. In terms of paint job, it's it's named Amber Glow and Matte Carbon. So in terms of Amber Glow, I'm going to say Metallic Orange, which is absolutely uh, lovely in the light. But then the matte carbon, I'm thinking that is just a name for matte black. So if you're thinking of buying this bike, don't expect to see sort of like a, a carbon layup on this black part. It's not a carbon layup with a matte sort of top coat. It's just a, a matte black paint as far as I can see. So in terms of group set, we've got the new um, Ultegra Di2 12 speed. This bike comes as standard with a semi-compact chain set. So this is a 52-36 and the cassette that you get with it is an 11-30. to On my previous uh, bike, I was running a compact 50-34 the front and an 11-28 cassette at the back. With that setup, I found it that I needed an extra gear. With this new semi-compact crank set, luckily uh, the rear derailleur allows you to go up to a 34 tooth cog at the back. So what I've done is I've swapped out the original 11-30 cassette, I've put the 11-34 cassette on that you can get, and I've moved across the original that I got with the bike to my turbo trainer. So now I'm on 12 speed everywhere because I needed to get one anyway. So I might as well have got the 11 to 34 to fit on this. In terms of shifting performance, I mean, I've never had DI2 before, but it's super slick. I can't really compare it against anything else, but I'm, I'm really happy with sort of how quick it shifts. These are the shifters. Everything's like uh, in black, which I, I quite like. So one thing I would say on this new group set, and I don't know if it's specific to this group set and the, the new Durace group set, but when I bought the bike, I managed to update all of the uh, firmware on the rear derailleur, front derailleur, um, through the eTube Shimano app but I can't currently update the firmware for the shifters because you have to have a wire from the rear derailleur to the shifters to update the firmware. So I thought you'd be able to do it all wireless because the shifters are now wireless, but you can't update the firmware through the shifters, which is kind of annoying actually, but hey ho, it is what it is. I never knew that you needed a cable, so I'm gonna to have to buy one. I'm, I'm kind of surprised one didn't come with a bike. Maybe the bike shop kept it, but um, who knows. So in terms of uh, wheels, we've got uh, Giant's SLR1 um, carbon rims. They are 42 mil uh, deep, as you can see. And the, the sort of external width, I believe, is 23 mil, which I think with the trend, with the trend going to wider tires, it's kind of surprising that it's not slightly wider because you wouldn't be able to fit 28 mil tires on here with it still being flush to the rim. So if I t if I show you, these are 25 mil tires and they're pretty like flush with the rim. If you put 28 mil tires on these rims which I'm still potentially gonna do because I'd rather the comfort. Uh, you might get small, um, a small bit of bulge coming out from the side. So they won't be uh, as aero as they could be, but I think the comfort level for me is probably more of a factor. So I think they are 1.4 kilo 
uh, per pair and they are set up tubeless so running the Cadex tyres that you get with it at the moment but I think I'm going to be moving over to my uh, Schwalbe Pro ones that I'm going to get and again I'm still I'm still unsure whether to go to Tamwall or whether or not I should uh, keep to black. I kind of like the black on this bike. I don't know if the Tamwall would take away from sort of the the paintwork. Let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Tamwall or black? Kind of like it, black as it is. And in terms of other components, so we've got a giant. Um, standard handlebar carbon again but it's not aero it's just a normal sort of like round handlebar you would get standard but it seems that these uh, drops seem a little thinner than what I've had previously but maybe that's just the bar tape that's been wrapped onto it. In terms of the stem uh, this is the only piece of the bike that is alloy so you can get um, a carbon stem from Giant, but it's about 220 quid or something like that. So that's probably not something I'm gonna be gonna be changing anytime soon either. So I'll stick with the stick with the alloy stem for now. It's a hundred mil stem that you get with, with size medium. And the last thing is the seat post and the saddle. So the seat post as I mentioned is the, the defuse type seat post so it's it's a D shaped and it's sort of cam tail at the back and then the saddle is a giant fleet SL so it's sort of like a carbon uh, composite underneath with just sort of alloy uh, rails. It's the first saddle I've had with a cutout actually so I'm gonna see how I get on with that. The previous saddle was a Physique Antares so it's just quite sort of long and pointy whereas this is a, a stubby nosed saddle um well obviously with the cutout so so yes um you also get with the bike this um garmin mount which comes with different adapters for if you've got like a, a wahoo or not but in, i don't know if you can see it just screws into the the bottom two holes of your um stem clamps there Okay, so I've just swapped the bike around just so you can see the um, the cable routing. So obviously the wise, the the shifters are wireless, so there's no there's no cable for the Di2. There's only two cables for the brakes. Uh, the rear brake. Um, sorry, that's just that's just Larry joining us. The the rear brake goes through down the side, through to the back, and the front again normal goes through the, the front fork. What I would say is I, I think that this cable is a little bit too long. So it probably needs just chopping back from the caliper and probably just pulling through maybe, I don't know, two to three inch just to get rid of this like big loop to make it a bit more like this one. Uh, then I think that would tidy it up. So I just thought I'd now uh, go through sort of like the difference between this bike and sort of like the Force Axis version and 2021's version of this same bike. So first off, last year's version of this same bike came with the power meter on the crank set. So it, it was a previous generation Di2 Ultegra with an integrated uh, power meter in the cranks that retailed for 5200 so this bike now retails at 5000 it comes with the new Ultegra 12 speed but it doesn't come with a power meter so in terms of um sort of like value for money things like that you you were paying 200 pound extra last year for a power meter which is uh, pretty cheap for a power meter to be honest uh, what I would say though is that if you did want a power meter straight away you can go to the SRAM Force uh, Axis version of this same bike. That will cost you £5,600, comes with a, a power meter and 12 speed. Um, but the bike is, is I think about 300 grams heavier than this bike. 
So my thoughts were, were that I like Shimano. I wanted the new 12-speed um, Old Tegra, so that's what I got. And in terms of a power meter, I'm thinking of getting power meter pedals. So then uh, the weight offset will, the, the weight will pretty much end up the same and the cost will be, if not a bit less than buying the SRAM Force version of this bike. So we'll see what it is. I'm going to, I'm going to weigh it now for you. So let's just um, give you a bit of info. We've got the Garmin mount on and sacrilege but i got these free 105 pedals which are only 20 grams heavier than the Ultegras, but um they're on so running tubeless yeah it's pretty it's pretty standard the only thing obviously is i've put uh, an 11 to 34 tooth cassette on it so that might add a few grams yeah let's weigh it now right hopefully i can do this i'm on the gopro and i'm, I'm having to use larry's uh Larry dog collar to hold this up, so give us a sec. So then zero it, zeroed out. So we are seven point seven three five, which that's not too bad. I think that's really good to say that um, I'm going to be swapping out the pedals for some similar pedals, power meter pedals that won't add, they probably add about 100 grams compared to those, and uh, a couple of edges. So I think this is going to be probably a 7.9 kilogram build. So hopefully, I've covered most of the things that you'd want to know about the bike. If there's anything else, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.